Hello everyone, Chris here, and today I'd like to give you a brief comparison between basic web hosting, such as you might find on a site like HostGator or Bluehost.com, and compare that with virtual private server hosting, which personally I like to use DigitalOcean for, but you can also find on HostGator as well now, and uh, similar other sites. Of course, as always, if you do find the tutorial useful and you want to help support the creation of these tutorials, you can check out the Patreon and make a pledge at patreon.com slash christutorials. So to talk about regular web hosting, normally you would just go out and choose a plan for a few dollars a month, and then on the servers of whatever service you were purchasing, they will give you a certain amount of disk space and bandwidth per month to um, log in and put your files on and transfer files as people visit your website and maybe download stuff from it or just view all the images that your website is providing. And in order to get your files on their web server for basic web hosting, you would normally use a web interface such as cPanel. And cPanel is nice in that it makes it really easy to get files onto the server to possibly manage your domains and make sure they're assigning properly. Um, because you don't have to mess around with text editors. You don't really need to know Linux commands or anything like that. Uh, the only problem is that it doesn't give you as much power as you would have if you were using a virtual private server host. Uh, because uh, with a virtual private server host, they basically just give you full admin access to your cutout instance of Ubuntu or whatever other operating system the VPS is running. And from there, you can actually, uh, like with DigitalOcean, you can go ahead, SSH, uh, Secure Shell, log into a Linux interface, and then, just as if you were a power user on your own computer, which you probably are, you can actually go ahead and make changes to the web server, Apache web server, uh, mess with PHP, enable or disable modules, and if you want to like enable multiple uh, websites, that's really easy. You can create separate directories for that, although I think you can also do that uh, through cPanel as well. Um, of course, if, if you go back here to, to take a look at the host data page, you can only have multiple domains if you actually purchase a higher, pl uh, higher plan. So in some cases, they might not let you just create as many websites you want on uh, one plan. Uh, you might have to pay extra for that. But right to get back to uh, VPS and Linux, being able to be a full admin access um, has advantages and disadvantages. The disadvantage is that to the average user, it's really freaking confusing. If you take a look at this and it scares the hell out of you, um, all, all these lines, then you might not be actually looking for a VPS web host. Uh, just because you have to do a lot of this stuff yourself. Um, like with DigitalOcean, I'm not actually sure if you can contact them to log in and fix things for you. You probably can, but they'd charge you for it. But it's, it's really easy to mess things up and uh, get files deleted if you're not careful when you actually log in to administrate your website. And so you have power, but it's, it's dangerous to an extent. Whereas you go back to the basic web hosts and you only have access to something like cPanel, which has most of the functionality you need. But if you do need to make changes to how Apache runs or how um, PHP is running, like with what modules, you might not even be able to change it at all. I mean, in many cases, the best case is that you contact one of their administrators and they go and make a change for you. But in, in some cases, it's not even possible. They might tell you no. They might say, oh, well, it's a security vulnerability or something like that. So you don't really have the ability to go ahead and make your own mistakes. And um, not being able to make your mistakes may be good for the regular user, as I, I keep mentioning. Um, but for power users, personally, I'd probably go with DigitalOcean. Personal, I, I like to use DigitalOcean a lot uh, with my own projects. Um, and it's not just because of the fact that you have that back-end interface, but also a lot of these virtual private servers, especially um, DigitalOcean, you might notice, it comes with solid-state drive, uh, which runs a lot faster than a normal hard drive. And that's not so much an advantage of virtual private servers directly, but um, you don't get the same thing with most uh, regular web hosting. They might be running on just a standard hard drive. So 
To reiterate the main points, um, if you just need to install WordPress or something like that, you can use uh, you can use a regular web host, go and log in through cPanel, and there'll probably be a click here to use the WordPress installation wizard. It'll create, uh, it'll put all the files in the directory where you need it, and it, it'll uh, create a database, it'll do all those little tasks for you, and you can have a basic site up and running in a few minutes. But if you need to do advanced stuff, like um, DigitalOcean actually kind of advertises, they, they market to developers and other people who are very tech savvy because they might have different needs that really need to mess with the back end stuff. Then if you're that kind of person, or maybe you're a professional or something like that, then going with DigitalOcean and having full access um, to your virtual private server, in many cases, is not only really cool and empowering, but it's also very useful and being able to strip out that middleman of having to contact their technical support, it's nice to have if you know you can do everything yourself. In terms of pricing, uh, I believe DigitalOcean starts at about five bucks a month, which, you know, you can run basic WordPress sites uh, and that kind of thing right off of that, especially if you um, take some of the hard drive space and make a swap file so that, you know, if the memory ever does go overflowing, it doesn't crash your server. Um, but, you know, if you're just looking for regular web hosting sites and you don't really know much at all about uh, Linux, then probably just stick with regular web hosting. It's fine. One last thing I forgot to mention is, of course, if you do know how to install programs in Linux, you always can install and get running cPanel on your own virtual private host. There's nothing to stop you from doing that if you know how. So you can kind of get the best of both worlds if you do have the technological expertise to do so. Yeah, so that's really all there is to it. If you have any questions about this, I know I threw a lot of things out there and uh, almost delved into other topics that are a whole other story for another time, like solid state hard drives or, uh, you know, using the Linux terminal, which might be good for tutorials. Go ahead and let me know down in the comments. If you want to see anything specific, yeah, you can let me know down there as well. Of course, if this helped you out at all um, in making a decision, um, you can help support the tutorial creation by going to our Patreon at patreon.com slash christtutorials. Uh, much appreciated if you can pledge anything. Aside from that, I've been Chris. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you all next time.